Hello. It's only me, Edna. Oh, oh, come in, love. Come in. Oh, you've got it nice and warm in here. It's freezing outside. I thought you'd forgotten me. No, I just like to say the best till last. And I'm on your way home. <laughs> you don't forget anything, do you? Oh, let me. Okay. So, how have you been today? Oh. Fur to middling. Am I still alive? Your pressure's up a little, but that's to be expected. So I'm not for the scrap heap yet, then? Oh, you've got plenty of miles left in you yet. A word of advice. Never take up poker. You couldn't bluff to save your life. I know you've got your job to do, but could I ask a little favour? Depends what it is. Could we forget the rest of the prodding and the pushing just for tonight? Maybe you, you could give me a good wash down instead. A once over with a damp cloth would do. Don't see why not. You'll, you'll find everything you need in the kitchen. OK. I had the old milk get things ready. Just in case. You've got wonderful skin. Skin like a babby, they used to say. Sunday night bath night all over again. <sighs> Crackle of logs on the fire. Kettle starting to whistle on the ob. Dad sleeping off his Sunday dinner. Mum trying not to get soap in my eyes. And then going to bed. Drifting off to sleep. To never, never land. Oh. It's funny how clear things are as though they've happened yesterday. But you never forget the important things, like your first day at school. Riding a bike without stabilisers. Going to my first dance at the social club. Swapping my vest for a training bra. Collecting my first week's wages. Sneaking into a pub underage. <sighs> my first Valentine's card. Oh, the first time a boy asked me out. My first, first real kiss. kiss. <laughs> <gasps> Harry Jackson. Sunday school picnic. Billy Clark, year eight disco. Bad spots and a bum fluff moustache. Bad spots and a mullet. <laughs> oh, he wouldn't even spit his bubblegum out first. Oh, it was strawberry flavour. Oh, sorry, I better get that. That won't be a sec. What have I told you about calling me at work? Yes, I got your messages. I love it when you text dirty to me, but there are two bees in throbbing. Uh, no, of course I haven't forgotten. Did we say I've passed? Yeah, no problem. I'm on my last call now. I'll see you there. Bye. It was just the surgery. Checking up on you, were they? 
I wonder where they are now. Who? Those first boyfriends. The last I heard, Billy Clark was a big cheese and a fried chicken franchise. <laughs> I know where Harry Jackson is. In the canal. <laughs> he took up fishing, became a champion maggot drowner. The canal was his favourite spot, so he scattered his ashes there last year. Oh, I'm sorry. About Harry? Oh, don't be silly. I shed a few of the service, of course, but... Uh, when you get to my age, you've got more friends in the next world than this. <sighs> Thank you. How does a cup of tea and a biscuit sound? <laughs> Not for me, Doc. No, I... I can't seem to keep anything down nowadays. It's probably the new tablets. <sighs> but you go ahead. <laughs> There's some chocolate fingers in the biscuit barrel and I know how you like those. <laughs> oh. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. What are you doing? Hey. If you want something, uh. just ask. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Stupid. Stupid girl. Oh. oh, help. I told her, make sure they're facing this way, look. Look. It wasn't too much to ask. Just a bit of thought. Just for today, that's all. Oh. My last home help. She was a treasure. But this one, this new one, I don't cook, I don't hoover, and I won't touch toilets. Oh, God. Home help. She's more of a home handicap. Couldn't you get another one? Do you know how long it took me to get this one? It would take at least a month. I don't think I've got that much time to waste, do you? Is this you? Well, you'll have to bring it a bit closer, don't... Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was on my 16th birthday. Dad took me to the studio as a treat. Oh, you were beautiful. You don't have to sound so surprised. I wasn't born old, you know. I could have given you a run for your money when I was in my prime. Mm. My, my hair was always my best feature. Hair like an angel, they used to say. It's a pity I can't do it justice anymore. I have got something on for tonight, but... There's still enough time for me to get home and get changed. An angel. An angel in blue. That's what you are. Oh. And is my makeup there as well? Yes. What a coincidence. Right. Do you want tea with a vicar or the full Saturday night special? Ooh, I think the full special, don't you? <laughs> so, who's this date with? Have you said anything about a date? Well, you wouldn't have your eyes glued to the clock if you were going home for beans on toast and a, a quiet night in, would you? It's just someone I met recently. Was that him on the phone? Maybe. <laughs> Is he handsome? Of course. Charming? Very. Good in bed? Edna! What? I'm not supposed to be interested anymore? Well, that's personal. Fair play. Is he someone special or just a temporary dressing? A 
for temporary dressing. Someone nice on your arm, but who you'll happily change if, if a better prospect comes along. Now, don't tell me you don't do that. Not on a regular basis. <laughs> I remember one night. I went into town with a bombardier, danced all night with a sailor, and came home with a corporal from the home guard. Yours isn't the first generation to discover the opposite sex. Oh, no, but... What do you think we did all night? Sit around the wireless knitting balaclavas for the troops? <sighs> I've never given it much thought. No. No, you just see grey hair and you think, oh, yeah, there's another wrinkly. There's nothing your generation could tell mine about having a wild time. I was only 19 when war broke out. Air raid shelters. Blackouts, GIs. <laughs> Forget Al Alamein. My mum thought the real battle was how she was going to keep me in of a night. <laughs> Tell me about it. I think my mum would have had me in a chastity belt if she could have found one. Oh, there's nothing like a uniform to help pull the fellas, is there? That's what they say. But it's mostly the wrong kind. I get more than my fair share of pinchers and gropers. <laughs> I come in black and blue some nights. My mum thought she was taking me away from temptation when she helped get me posted to the hospital. You were a nurse? No. no I was with the WVS. I was only supposed to help with the cleaning, but on my very first night, we were short-staffed. Sounds familiar. Yeah, they brought in this old man. He'd been on fire watch and an incendiary had landed on the school. He put the fire out, saved the building, not before he suffered 70% burns. There was this smell. Smell? He was still cooking inside. The doctors said, don't worry, you'll get used to it. I didn't want to. It wasn't all bad. I made a lot of friends and it helped me grow up. Maybe decide not to go back to being Mummy's little girl. <laughs> you see, I'd met someone. Oh, yeah. Was he handsome? Of course. Charming? Very. <laughs> and he was good in bed. <gasps> Johnny was quiet, gentle. He was a bit of a poet. But he never showed me any of his poems. <laughs> he was too shy. Well, that would have been a complete no-no for my Mum. Never get involved with artists or writers. She's met a few and reckons they're all mad. <laughs> then again, she reckons I should avoid musicians, because they're all on drugs, sportsmen, because they're all on drugs. Or anyone with another colour skin. Johnny was from Jamaica. He was a good boy. But none of that mattered to my mum. She stopped you from seeing him? If I tried to go against her, mum would have found another way to ruin it. Now, what about this wall paint? Oh, that one. Hmm. <laughs> 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 I guess things have a funny way of working out for the best. I mean, if I hadn't finished with Johnny, I'd never have met the real love of my life. Fred's there, the silver frame. He's quite the hunk. Oh, yes. I had to fight off a few rivals to land him. <laughs> April 3rd, 1946. It had poured down all week, but that morning, the sun burst through the clouds. I know it's something you hear people say all the time, but we really were made for each other, Fred and me. You certainly look happy. Oh, we had our ups and downs, but it was a good marriage. It's just a shame it had to end so suddenly. Fred had gone down to the garden shed, something about slug pellets. When he hadn't come back after two hours, I went looking for him. There he was, sitting there in an old deck chair. 
Just like he was having one of his naps. He must have been lonely since. Oh. oh, I suppose everything happens for the best. If I'd gone first, Fred would never have managed. He'd have starved within a week. Who's this? Oh, yeah. That's Michael Anthony. Eight pounds, three ounces, and 12 hours in labour. I didn't know you had a son. He'd have liked you. If only you'd met him before she got her hooks into him. He never did give me the grandchildren like he'd promised. She didn't want any. I haven't heard a word from her for years. Not since the funeral. Funeral? He was only 35. It was on the local news. The car was a total wreck. It's no wonder I never recognised it. This policeman was still telling how the driver had to be cut out of the car when the doorbell started ringing. And it was him, the policeman from the telly. And I knew straight away. So, oh, is, is this air finished or what? Yeah. <sighs> what do you think? I... Oh. It's a bit of a shock, though, isn't it? I mean, I look in the mirror sometimes and I think, who's this wrinkled old bag staring back? <laughs> when I'm in my mind, I'm still 25. <laughs> <laughs> Edna? Oh. Come on. Breathe slowly. Yeah. Deeply. I'm not ready. Shush. Don't talk. Just breathe. That's it. Just testing. Maybe this is too much of a strain. No, don't be silly. It's the most fun I've had in ages. This is my baby, but I'm wondering if we shouldn't get you back into hospital. No. You could have another attack any minute, only next time you... you'd be much better off at St Phil's. All right. All right, I'll go to hospital. But please, not in this tatty old thing. It would only take a minute to change, and then I'll do anything you say. I only want what's best for you. I know. This is lovely. It's the last present Fred ever bought me. It's real silk. It looks new. I've been saving it. Saving it? What's this all about, Edna? What do you mean? This. The washing, the hair, the makeup. Well, everyone needs a bit of a spruce up now and again. What's going on? Edna. I didn't think I could pull the wool over your eyes. You're too good a nurse. I'd hoped you'd understand. Is this what I think it is? I remember the first time I was asked to do it. It's the last service you can do for someone else. Last offices. But why me? Why tonight? Because it's important that it's done properly. By someone you trust. And... And because I know that tonight's the night I'm going to die. Oh. Not even the best doctor in the world can tell you exactly how long you've got. Faith, do you know how many times I've been where you are now? I've seen it with my own eyes. Seen what? When some people get close, after they've put their affairs in order and said their last goodbyes, they can choose when they want to go. It's... It's like having a switch inside you. When you're as close, 
as close as I am now. You can choose when to turn the light off. No. I've never carried out last offices. I'm a practice nurse. I could have gone into accident and emergency, theatre nursing or geriatrics, but I didn't. I deliberately chose ingrown toenails, vaccinations and changing dressings. I don't do code blues and grieving relatives. I do keep taking the tablets and I'll see you next week. I don't do death. What are you so afraid of? I'm afraid of lying in a bed in a house all alone with, with everyone I ever cared about already dead. I don't want some young nurse looking over me saying no pupil reaction, no respiration, no pulse, no heart sounds. Saying that it's all over. What makes you think that death is the end? I hoped you weren't going there. Why? <laughs> My mum's one of the happy, clappy brigade. She used to drag me to church when I was a kid. Oh, I used to love some of the Bible stories. But to me, that's all they were. Stories. I couldn't believe like she does. But do you think I was any different? I didn't go searching for my faith. It, it just sort of sneaked up on me. What made you change your mind? My mum. She came into my bedroom one night and sat on my bed. I asked her what she wanted and she said, I've just come to tell you that everything's all right. You're not to worry. I thought, ta very much for coming in at one o'clock, waking me up and telling me that. And I went back to sleep and didn't think anything of it. Next day, the hospital phoned. Mum had died in the night, just as the clock struck one. Did I really see her? Was it a dream? I tried to rationalise it at the time. Maybe if it had been a one-off, I, I could have dismissed it more easy, but, but the older I got, the more I was with people who passed over, the more I came to realise that death wasn't an end. I'd love to believe that this isn't the only chance we're going to get. But heaven, nirvana, never, never land. Whatever you call it, it's just a fantasy. Something people comfort themselves with when they know they're going to die. Well, it looks like I'll be the first one of us to find out which one is right. It's just a shame I, I won't be able to let you know which way it went. And in the meantime, there's no point in waiting till I die. There's no one left of you, my body. And if I'm right, I want to be ready. I want to look my best when Fred and Michael come to collect me. And if I'm wrong, well, I could knock them for six on the geriatrics ward. OK. You win. <sighs> You look lovely. Oh. OK. I'm ready now. I'll feel much happier knowing that you're in good hands. So will I. Yes, this is uh, Nurse Walker from Riverside Surgery. I need an ambulance to 15 Greystone Terrace, Leather Bridge. No, it's not an emergency. OK, thanks. There'll be half an hour. While we're waiting, shall we have a bit of music? The tape's all set up. But this is the last favour, OK? The last one. I thought I might play this at my funeral. Thought I'd better warn them upstairs. 
what to expect. Then it's just as well that they're going to have to wait a bit longer for your arrival. Edna, 